This is Dr. Carroll, and this video is about merge sort. It's a wonderful algorithm with a great big O, and um, it's even the default for Java sorting. So it's, a, it's an important algorithm, and, and it's an interesting one to study. It has a classic recursive divide and conquer strategy, and we'll, we'll see that played out here. So let's first talk about its steps. Step one is if we're only looking at one element, well, then we're done. That, that's a, a base case here. The second step is to divide the array that, or at least the portion of the array that we're looking at into halves. Okay, the portion of the array that we're looking at into halves. And then we're going to sort each half with recursive calls. And then once we know that they're sorted, we're going to merge those sorted halves into, a, into one sorted array. Okay, so merging is at the heart of merge sort. All right, let's look at an emerging example here. If we had two arrays, one with 1, 3, 5, 6, and 7, and then another array with 0, 2, 4, 8, 9, we're going to merge them into a third array indicated here with a temp array. I've, I've left some question marks here to indicate that we had to allocate that much memory, but it's just random values. Also, you'll notice these indices here. They're markers to keep help us keep track where are we in the... Uh, respective arrays and with the third uh, marker here to tell us where we are in our temporary array. What we're going to do is just walk down these two arrays with these two uh, indice markers here and take the smaller one and just put it in order. So we, we evaluate which is which is the lesser value here where the two markers are and we're going to put it here in this array and then we move that marker, we move this marker and then we repeat. Okay, now we, it's one, so we can change that marker, change this one. Okay, now the, the smaller is two, change that marker. Okay, now the smaller is three. Notice that we're just going one at a time. Each, each iteration through the, the loop to populate this is going to move one of these two, and it will move this one. This one's probably going to be a, a loop index, is how it's often implemented. Okay, well, they've been just incremental till this point, but now let's see what happens. Okay, so now we five, increment that marker. Okay, oh, six, increment that marker. Seven, increment that marker. Um, and increment this one. Notice this one is now finished, it is pointing past the number of elements in that array. And so when we get to that point, then we just copy over the remaining elements left in the, the other array there. And it doesn't, the, the algorithm's generic and it doesn't matter which one ends first. And then, then we're all done. Now in practice, what really happens is that this array is really right there. They're just, they're, they're really one in the same array and we just keep track of pointers. And then we have a, so we have one array here and then we have another array here that, that we're copying into. Okay, now that we've seen an example of merging, let's see an example of merge sort, okay? So let's start with a random array here, 71953. And I, I'm going to use a notation here, a, a dot to indicate that there's actually a value in the array, but we're not going to focus on it given the scope of our recursive call. So that, that's what the dot is going to stand for here. Okay, And so the, the first part is that we're going to uh, divide the array into halves. So 719 is going to be one half and 53 is going to be the other half. And then we're going to sort, we're going to make a recursive call to the, the each uh, half, so 719, and then we'll make another recursive call to 53. And, we'll, and then when we're done with that call, we'll come back and merge it. Okay, so step two there is divide it in half and then um, make a recursive call. So we're going to call merge sort again on just the first half. And then notice these are out of scope. Really in practice, we're going to keep track of where in the array we're, we're working with with some indices, okay? Well, now it's 
recursive. And so again, we're, we're, we went back to step two, we're dividing it in half, and then we're so calling merge sort on the first half. So when looking just at these three, the first half is going to be the first two, and the second half is going to be the last one. Okay, And then we call merge sort again on just the first half of the first half of the first half. Okay, And then, oh, great. Now we're down to size one, and so that's sorted. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call merge sort on the second half of the first half of the first half. And oh, great, that one's size one also. So then we've, we've completed step three finally for the first time in our recursive stack here. And we're going to merge these two. And so as we did up here, we're going to merge the two. And we're going to put one first, and then we're going to add seven there. Okay, and so now we've merged them. Okay, and so now we're done with the sorting for um, this half. So we need to go back now and call merge sort on the second half here. Okay, so we're just looking at nine, and oh great, it's of size one. That means it's sorted. So now we we are on step four again with this half and this half, and now we merge them together, which is really easy because they're, they're they're actually in order, and we didn't even we just need to copy them to a temporary and then copy them back. Okay, so now we're done merging the first half. Okay, but notice we haven't even tackled the second half here of the original array, and so then we need to call merge sort on that second half. Okay, and then to do that we're gonna call it on the, the first one, the, the, the first element there, and then we're going to call it on the second one, and then we're going to merge it all together. Uh, oh, I may have missed a call to, to 5, 3 here. Sorry. We're going to, and so now we've taken these two halves, and they've been of size 1, and then we've merged them together by putting them in order. Now, merge to this point has been really, really simple, and now we're going to take this merged half, and this merge half, and we're going to walk through one by one, keeping track. We're going to add one, and then we're going to add three, and then we're going to add five, and then we're going to add seven, and then we're going to add nine, and then, hey, it's sorted in order. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about the skeleton code. It recursively sorts the left and right halves of the array in the original array, and then merges the two halves, okay? And so here we have merge sort, which um, is going to take as arguments an array and a first index and a last index. Here we have our, our base case. Well, first had better be less than last, or our markers or indices have crossed, and um, or they're pointing to a size one array. Either way, uh, we're, we're done, because we, we don't need to merge. We don't need to sort an array that's of size one or, or less than that. So the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sort the left half if, if it has two or more elements. And then we're going to sort the right half. And then we're going to merge those two halves together. OK, so in code, well, we need to figure out what the middle is so we can figure out what the half is. Then we're making a recursive call here to merge sort, passing in the original array. Notice this is just a generally a pointer, so it's very easy. And we're going from the first up to the middle. Okay, so this is the first half here. And so we're not copying the array, we're just giving pointers into it and giving access to it. And then to sort the right half, we just pick up where we left off here, one more than the middle, and then go all the way to the last. Now, at this point, we're guaranteed that first to mid is sorted, respective to the elements in there, and mid plus one all the way to the last is sorted for those elements. Then what we need to do is we need to merge them together. And we need to go from the first to the last and merge them together. Okay? Well, now we need to talk about merge. So merge is we're given two sorted halves in the array, and they're between the indices first and last. We're going to merge them so that the contents of the array um, between the first and last are sorted. Now, you might have felt like that was a little verbose, but at different times with uh, merge, we're only acting on a portion of the array and not the entire array itself. So I had to be careful with the language there. 
So we have the call to merge, and again, we need access to the array. We need to know what portion of the array are we acting on. And so we need to know the first index and the last index. Now, notice we, with other sorting algorithms, we haven't talked about this before, but we need to allocate memory for that merged array. Remember in the example we had a temporary, we needed a temporary location to keep track of walking down each one, and then we need to copy it back. Now, in practice, you're going to uh, allocate this once and allocate it to size n, and then just pass a pointer to it. But for simplicity, I've included it here, not for efficiency. Again, we need to calculate the midpoint. That's the same way we calculated it up in merge sort. And then we're going to walk down both halves of the array simultaneously and advancing either the index of the, the left half or the right half and copying the smaller of the two items into the temporary array. Well, great. But now we need to copy the temporary array over the original array. And we, we uh, so that it's back in the array pointer so that we can use it in our recursive calls. Okay. Okay, so now with the recursive algorithm, it's very helpful, I think, to see the, the call stack. So let's look at the call stack that uh, calls that were made for that example up in num example one there. So first we called merge sort on zero to four. So the very first to the last index, okay? And when we did that, we made three calls. We made, we're, we're going to make a merge sort call for, for the first half, a merge sort call for the second half, and then we're going to merge it all together. Okay, so now we have this call to merge sort. Now it's a recursive call, so then it's going to make three calls itself. Merge sort on the first two elements, and then merge sort on the third element, and then we're going to merge those three together. Okay, well, you guessed it. Merge sort on uh, the first two elements, we need to call merge sort on the first element. We're going to call merge sort on the second element. And then it's going to hit the base case and say, woohoo, we're done. And then we're going to merge those two together. Okay. And then um, further down here in the second half, when we, once we've completed merge, we're going to call this merge sort. And then we're going to make um, a merge sort, merge sort, merge call here. And we can see that here, sorry, the paging. And then once we're done with this merging, then we're going to merge the entire, um, we're going to merge all of the elements together, OK? And so this is a, a call stack of, of what the calls, for example, one actually looks like. Now, let's talk about efficiency. And I want to just do an, uh, an intuitive analysis instead of a more formal analysis. Now, to understand the big O merge sort, notice that it doesn't ever sort as we traditionally think about it. It doesn't sort. What does it do? Merge sort just makes recursive calls, simple calculations, and a call to merge. So it doesn't really sort. It just divides it down so small that it's of size one, and then it merges them together. So I don't think of that as sort generally, but hey, it works. They come out in sorted order. So the real heart of merge sort is actually in the merge, which is where it gets its name. Okay. And so the there are roughly um, assuming that we're dealing with an, an n that's a, a power of two, there's about two times log power of n calls to merge sort. Okay, because we're dividing in half, we're dividing in half, okay. We're going to assume it's uh, even uh, uh, halves here. And if not, it changes ever so slightly, and the analysis is the same. Okay, So don't worry about that. And then merge. Well, merge goes through, and it walks down, and it takes order n time to make a copy into the temp array. And then it needs to make a copy again from the temp array back to the original array. So that's where we get the 2n, one to populate the temp array, and then one to copy those contents back. So that's, that's good. That's order, order 2n time. And so merge sort then takes the number of merge calls and then times that by the number of uh, the time it takes for, for merge. And so applying big O analysis on this, we, we get n log n, which is fabulous. OK, 
Okay, so let's talk about its characteristics now. Is it stable? Yes, it is. It is stable, which is great. And um, and and it's also a, a efficient algorithm. Now, one of the big limitations here with um, merge sort is that it does require order and extra space. It needs that needs to make a copy of um, the array for merge there. So that's probably its biggest limitations. And when you're sorting a lot of numbers, you want a fast algorithm, but you may be really constrained on space. When you're sorting a billion trillion numbers, it, you just run out of space. So then the average case, as we talked about analysis, is n log n. And, and this is near optimal number of comparisons. Now notice that the analysis is the same for the average case and the worst case. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing, n log n for the worst case. Now along those same lines of thinking, it also means that it's not adaptive. Well, there's more merge sort, a wonderful algorithm with a wonderful worst case, a, a classic recursive divide and conquer strategy with a, the major serious limitation as being the extra space being order in. That concludes this video.